Okay, uh, I had a viewer who wanted to know a little bit more about this Monroe 1651 scientific calculator. This is the one with the Nixty tube displays. I got two videos on this. One is a one is a tear down and one is a use video. I will link to them in the show notes. What the uh, what the other viewer wanted to know is uh, he wanted to see more about these keys. He uh, or she, I guess I could be the one. Uh, just wanted to know more. And so really the lid comes off and these keys, well they're not too complicated, they come off almost like any old computer um, keyboard does, like the old apples, they have a little X in them. And they do pop off, and then there's a little module here, there's like a little bit of a rubber membrane here, which can come up, and then you can kind of see the side. So then you can kind of see it's just a plastic tube here, and uh, so they're very well sealed, they're large. They're all labeled the same, and to get them off, because they're sort of well sealed, is it looks like there's a, a little nylon screw and a couple, of maybe two, uh, solder joints. So I'm going to take that off and then pop that off just because this particular viewer wants to know as much as they can about these keys. Um, you probably could get replacements, um, new old stock on eBay, you never know. Uh, my keys are all working. That's the problem. My problem with mine is a, one of the chips, one of the higher function chips is bad. But that's that's in the old uh, that's in the old video. So let me pull that off and take a better look at it for for my viewer. I did burn the board, the fiberglass board, but there's no traces or nothing there, but I did get a little too hot. It burnt just a little bit, but no traces, no damage. So that's probably the date code, October 26, 1970 is probably when this was made. But yeah, there's the standoff that holds it nice and tight so it doesn't, you know, waggle around and break the solder joints. That's pretty clever. Let's make sure it still works as a, as a sign key. So this should be buzzing if I push the button. Yeah, it still works fine. So that's uh, that's what my viewer wanted to know. He wanted to know, hey, can't you take this apart and look at the keys? And these are what all the keys look like. Um, you know, they're really tight. You're not going to get dirty. Um, a nice positive spring in there. It's very well built. You know, the only thing is that they're just tall, you know, you couldn't do that in modern keys nowadays or they don't make spaces, they just... And so, some of this stuff goes together by just being glued on once it's assembled and glued. But you can get a screwdriver in here and pop this little top off. And then this comes off and that's just got two posts on the side for sliding. There's, there's something inside, um, gosh, I don't know what you would call it, but... It looks like a it looks like a reed switch inside. Yeah, it's like a that's that that thing sticking up. It's not a post. It's a it's a plast. It's a it's an electronic device with a. It almost looks like a glass reed switch in there. That's odd. A glass reed switch. So this might be like a magnetic. This might be a a magnet around here. And then when you push this plastic down, you're pushing some sort of a shield out of the way, allowing the reed switch to close magnetically. Really? Take a look at that. Okay, so I have my fluke hooked up um, to the switch. And as you know, if you just push it, 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 it seems to go off pretty quick. Um, just a slight little tap, it goes off. And you can notice I have a lot of travel still. And it looks like a reed. It looks like a magnetic reed, reeve, reeve switch. Gosh, I can't say that. At any rate, yeah, it is magnetic. There's some sort of a shield in there that's keeping the magnetic, uh, make, making making the contact closer, keeping keeping that reeve reeve switch open. And when something exposes magnet to it, so this is a, a strong magnet. See, goes off, and so all this is doing is is it's taking and pushing a shield out of the way, 
and when that shield pushes out of the way there must be a small magnet in there that engages that, that reeve switch Let me see if I can get some light down in there. I don't know if that's a good view of it, is it? Can you see down in there? It's just sort of got a loop of metal between the two contacts and then a glass bead with a wreath, wreath inside, wreath inside. Wreath switch. God, somebody shoot me in the head and tell me how to say that correctly. So what pushes down, let me show you what actually moves in there. I, well, this is tough lighting wise. If I can get on the outside edge here, you can see that moves, and that must be the must have a magnet embedded in that plastic, that gray plastic there. And when that plastic pushes down more in line with that reeve switch, as soon as it gets down a certain amount, then it will snap closed. And then when it comes up, then it lets the reeve close again. So that's how that works. That's fascinating. That can be pushed millions hundreds of thousands if not millions and millions of times they were not kidding around when they made this switch nothing to clean nothing to service it's a magnetic it's a magnetic switch gonna last forever well thanks for that question i really enjoyed that teardown uh mini to mini teardown so yeah great great thing to learn i didn't know they were so nicely made so thumbs up if you liked the video and thanks for joining